Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Madison and today I wanted to walk you through my entire prayer plan collection. So let's get started. I believe I have 13 different plants to show you today. I'm just gonna kind of go through these guys and show you so you can see what they look like, what I think of the what they look like, I suppose. I'm not gonna go too deep into care or anything like that today because I will have another video coming out soon going over how I care for these guys because really they're pretty they're pretty easy care. So we'll go over that later, but today I just wanted to show you everything because I feel like I've got kind of a wide variety and I don't even have like a fraction of what's out there. So let me just show you what I've got here. Nothing is in any particular order, so let me just grab what is in front of me here. I've got my Calathea orbifolia. Um, I think this is actually recently, oops, recently reclassified to Geopersia orbifolia, so take the names, the first half of these names, with a grain of salt because with a pinch of salt, take them lightly with the first part of these names because there have been a lot of reclassifications it seems like recently the last couple of years so some of these are Calathea, some of these are Geopersia, some are Tenanthe, some are Stromanthe. We're gonna go through them all. So this is either Calathea or Geopersia um, but if you just search you know Orbifolia Calathea I'm sure you would find this guy but I love these leaves. I have two of these. This is the smaller just easier to bring upstairs here to show you. And look at those leaves. They are just beautiful. These are a little bit of a thicker leaf than some of the other um, prayer plants that I'm going to be showing you today, which I really, really enjoy. I find this one to be a little bit on the hardier side. Like, if you forget to water this guy for, you know, a few extra days, it's not going to have quite as many crisp up leaves as some of these other varieties here. So, yeah, beautiful Calathea orbifolia. And you can see where it gets that name, you know, super round leaves. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like I feel like there's water in this pot. Is there? There is. Let me just go like that. There we go. Okay, so this is my Maranta Kirchoviana. Kirchoviana? Yes, Maranta Kirchoviana. So I have both the variegated and non-variegated versions of this, I suppose. So I picked this pot because it kind of has both. So we've got a bunch of really beautiful non-variegated leaves here. Gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. And then What's the best one to show you? We do have some variegated leaves happening here. So these ones are a little bit more faded. They're a little older. But over here we have a little set of um, some really pretty like half moon uh, variegated leaves here. So hopefully you can see. Hopefully I'm not too shaky. But um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful plant. And again, I don't know if I don't think I mentioned, but um, these are all prayer plants, meaning that they will lift and lower their leaves with the circadian rhythm with the sunlight so as the light goes down the leaves will lift up and as the sun comes out the leaves will kind of settle back down so it's just a beautiful thing to watch and you'll like hear them swooshing against each other but yeah this is the maranta kirchoviana variegated and non-variegated kind of all mashed up in the pot here and i apologize too if you guys can hear any woodworking sounds happening or fan sounds happening I've got no choice today. So <laughs> hopefully you can't hear me with my microphone or hear any of that with the microphone, but just in case you do, I'm sorry about it. <laughs> so this guy here is my Tenanthe Burlmarksii or Burlmarks. Ooh, I'm spilling on myself. So the plant that I showed you just a second ago was um, more of kind of like a creepy crawling kind of plant. Like it will vine down if you let it hang. This guy is more of a sprawler. So he will just get bushier and bushier. Hi, bud. Sixto might join us here. So this is the Tenanthe Burlmarks, the I or Burlmarks, however you want to say it, is fine by me. Um, and yeah, beautiful plant. When I first got this guy, I'll try and find a picture um, and I'll try and find the date of when I first got this plant because I think I do have a picture. Um, it was significantly smaller than this. It was like, you know, just like a little plant about this size and it's just like expanded. So I love these for that. They're a great like kind of centerpiece. You know what I mean? Like how beautiful would that be too was like, acting as a bouquet, like for a wedding or something. Oh, so pretty. Okay, and then I want to show you it's kind of like mate, if you will. Where is it? So this one here is a Tenanthe Burl Marks Amagra Amagris? Amagris? I'll put the name on the screen for you, of course, but this is a like different version of this plant, essentially. I'm not really sure how we got here, but 
I'm happy about it. Like, look at how beautiful those are. And they're just, they're so striking, even next to each other. There's such a different, uh, like, color and kind of, like, patterning on there, even though it is obviously very similar. You can see definitely how they're relatives of each other, but so beautiful. This is a little bit more silvery, and this is more of, like, a true green with those darker green kind of stripes on it. And this is more of that light green with the kind of silvery hue over it and those very thin dainty almost like pinstripe fish boning lines and it's just beautiful and again this guy grows kind of in the same fashion as the other one where it's not going to ever kind of trail outward and like hang down like this guy will but he will just kind of like bush out and expand and so so cool and as you can see I keep this guy kind of like faced in one direction so the back of it isn't quite as like pleasing to the eye, but still beautiful. And you can see the kind of pretty color that it gets on the backs of the leaves. Oh, I didn't mention that for this other guy too. The backs of the leaves on this one are like kind of a deep purpley color and they fade to that more deep purple as they age. Beautiful. Not all prayer plants um, have the different colors of the backs of the leaves, but a lot of them do. So that's just another kind of fun factor and you really get to enjoy that at the end of the night when the leaves close up. So cool. All right, so what do I have next? Let's go over this guy next. Ooh, some of my leaves are really dusty. I did not dust any of these leaves beforehand, so don't judge me. Um, but this guy is my Calathea macquiana. <laughs> really had to think about that. Again, I believe this one may have been reclassified to Geopersia or Geopersia. Uh, Macquiana, either way, it's gorgeous. We'll call it whatever we want. Um, you'll also commonly find this guy um, called a like peacock feather plant or something like that. As, as you can see, you know, clearly kind of looks like a peacock feather. They're just beautiful. And I love the way that this guy looks from the top down. Again, kind of similar um, growth pattern as the last couple that I showed you. It's going to kind of grow taller and sprawl out a little bit more. But I would definitely say this guy grows significantly taller than either of the two Tananthi that I just showed you. So this is kind of nice to add a little bit of height to your collection. I do have this one in a little pot too with some legs on it to give, in, to give it even a little bit more height. Um, just because I really like mixing that up with my plant arrangement. But that's kind of besides the point. As far as the backs of the leaves on this one, they are still beautiful. And they have that kind of purpley hue to it. So gorgeous, and just like the venation. Oh, it's so cool. So, so cool. All right, so yeah, Calathea Macquiana. Let's do this little guy next. This guy lives right next to that Macquiana I just showed you. Um, this one is actually from, I think, my second or third YouTube video that I ever put out. It was a little repot video, and this guy has just been popping off. He does beautifully. He has been losing some of the variegation um, because it's been very far away from any natural light source but honestly I don't really mind I just think it's beautiful and I think I might try to stick this guy outside once it gets a little bit nicer out and the temperatures aren't dropping so much um, in the evenings but yeah beautiful plant this is the Tenanthe Luberciana Luberciana yeah a Tenanthe Luberciana if I'm butchering these names I apologize but um yeah like I always say not a botanist just an enthusiast but beautiful plants you can tell this and this were um, original leaves on here. And I think this one too, I think it had these three largest leaves. Once I'm able to give this guy like more direct light, or maybe not direct light, but just more like actual light in general, he'll be pushing out larger and more variegated leaves. I'm not sure if these guys like fully revert and don't go back. If so, I'll probably just try to cut it. You know, there's little knuckles right here. Um, so I probably just try to cut it back to the last point that it was variegated um, to see if that helps push out some new variegated growth. But honestly, I'm not too concerned about it. I think it's beautiful as it is now. I think the new growth is just lovely. Let's do this guy. So this one here is beautiful little lady looking a little bit rough. This is my Tenanthe, right? No. Stromanthe. Oh my gosh. This is my Stromanthe Magic Star. No. Stromanthe Trio Star. <laughs> we'll get to the Magic Star. It looks a little different. Um, but this one is beautiful. Pretty popular plant, I would say. I think a lot of these are pretty popular pl plants to begin with, so they should be pretty easy to find in your local nurseries. But this one is just beautiful. I wanted this plant for so long before I got it because, I mean, look at that. Look at the backs of that. It's like 
bright pink but also like stark white and just gorgeous it looks like a little painting on a leaf each each and every leaf is like its own little painting it's so cool and again you really get to appreciate those pinks abaxials pink pink <laughs> You really get to enjoy those pink abaxials when the leaves lift up at night too and it's just oh it's just lovely. I keep wanting to tell you guys about like different care things but again we'll get into care in another video here and we'll go a little bit more in depth. Um, but yeah beautiful Stromanthi Trio Star. Gorgeous. Go find one. <laughs> Let's do the Magic Star actually right after this guy just so that you can see whoop, so you can see the difference. So Again, we might be a little bit dusty here, and this is also a little bit of a rougher looking plant, but I love it nonetheless. So this is the um, Stromanthi Calathea, whatever, Magic Star. <laughs> so you can find it under Calathea, or you can find it under Stromanthi. Um, I've looked for both, or Stromanth. I could be saying that totally wrong. But beautiful, beautiful leaves. These ones are a little bit, let me just hold them up next to each other so you can really see the difference. This is our Trio Star, and this is the Magic Star. So, oh my gosh, they're just beautiful. I love having these kinds of plants like next to each other so that you can really kind of see the difference. But beautiful, I love the Magic Star. It's a little bit more kind of speckled in the variegation. It does have some sectoral chunks that it will pop out, but I just love how speckled that is. It's just beautiful and just different from all the other ones that I have, so I really appreciate that. This is the Magic Star, and one more time for the people in the back. This is the Magic Star, hopefully I'm holding that up okay, and the Trio Star, so you can hopefully see the difference on there. Yeah. So since we're on kind of like the rough plant track, let's continue on, shall we? This is my sad, so sad, Calathea Warsh Whiskey Eye. Warsh, Warsh Whiskey, Warsh, Warshwisher Sauce? name on the screen for you. Calathea Warsh Whiskey Eye, I'm gonna stick with that. Um, this guy is beautiful. It's so velvety, so velvety soft. I think this is the only like kind of, yeah, it's the only like velvety leaf um, prayer plant that I have in my collection. Oh my gosh, I'm having such a hard time with words. This is the only velvety um, prayer plant that I have in my collection. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no. Oh, I should stop on my head. Um, there are definitely a bunch of other more velvety kind of fuzzy Calathea that are out there. So if that is your thing, definitely do some searching because there's a bunch of really, really beautiful ones out there. But this is less fuzzy and more, like I said, that kind of velvety um, texture on there. It's got a beautiful sheen when it's clean and like, you know, really healthy, which mine's, yeah, we're, we're surviving. We're not thriving, but we're here. We're trying. Um, no bugs, so we got that going for us. Just really, really sad. I um, had this like tucked way far away and I was forgetting to water it for a long time. So we're bouncing back, we're figuring it out. But beautiful, beautiful plant nonetheless. I love these plants, especially my goal is to have like one that is just big and beautiful with like maybe just some crisp tips and like that's all, you know? But yeah, one day, this is a me problem. This is not a plant problem, this is a me thing. So <laughs> don't let this deter you from looking into this beautiful plant because it really is just a stunner and usually pretty easy to care for. So yeah, Calathea Warsh Whiskey Eye. Here we have a Calathea Freddy. So again, does this guy have, it does. It's got purple abac seals on there. So beautiful, beautiful leaves. I love that these ones are a little bit more narrow. Um, some of the other ones are a little bit more chunky, like, you know, the Kirchoviana is a little bit on that chunkier side um, and just beautiful. It does look a little bit similar to like the uh, Burley Marxii over here and then the Burl Marxii, um, 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 this other one, <laughs> um, a little bit similar, you know what I mean? But like, Still different. Definitely grows taller. So if we're looking at like main differences in characteristics, like this one grows more bushy, like that other Bromox, and this one is more tall, kind of similar to the Macleana. So again, a nice option to add some height. And then the color is just beautiful. It's got that kind of like silvery, bluey hue to it. And ugh, I just love it. Love it, love it. Again, really easy. I think all of these are pretty darn easy to care for. Again, I'm so sorry I keep talking about it, but I will have another video all about the care for these guys. So don't be deterred if you've heard bad things about the Calathea because they're not that scary. She's not scary. She's easy. Well, oh, 
you're not easy. Like, I don't know where I'm going with that. Put her away. Here is a Geopersia or Calathea insignis, I think is what it's called. I have, I'm so sorry. I have all the names written over here because I'm not going to remember all of them. And I always just call this the rattlesnake Calathea. This was one of my boyfriend's like first plants that he was really like, Ooh, oh, that's cool. Okay. I like that. It looks like a crocodile or something. <laughs> so even though it looks like it's supposed to be rattlesnake Calathea, but he thinks it looks like a crocodile. I'm pretty sure. So whatever you think it looks like, as long as you like it, get it again super easy i think this is i think this is the one that i've had like the least issues with care wise ever like it never gives me any issues and just beautiful and again purple backsides of the leaves i feel like i'm repeating myself for every plant but i mean they're all kind of similar but different enough that i want to show you guys so that you know some options even though i'm sure you've probably seen a lot of these before but who cares? It's fun to show anyway. So yeah, rattlesnake calathea, beautiful, beautiful plant. Again, kind of a sprawler, not as like tall as, where did, where did I put him? Not as tall as Freddy, right? Like, yeah, more of a sprawler than a uh, taller. Ah, more of a sprawler than a taller. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm in a weird headspace today. Can y'all tell? <laughs> This is my Maranta Lemon Lime. I cannot remember how to pronounce that uh, first official name for this guy, so it will be on the screen for you. But yeah, Calathea, um, or no, excuse me, Maranta. This is Maranta. I do know that for sure. I will have this plant in my collection forever. Like, she is just too beautiful to ever give up. Like, I love her. Even though she's got, like, some yellow leaves on her right now, maybe some crispy leaves on her, whatever. I'll pluck them off. I'll wait for her to crisp up a little bit more, cut it off beautiful she pushes out new growth for me constantly like constantly and they're always just so pretty like oh so pretty <sighs> again very dusty like i'm so sorry i should just like hose these guys off soon but um will i <laughs> probably not <sighs> probably not but that's okay well, i love having these as hanging plants i did before and that's why it's currently like still in this hanging thing i do just need to like pop it off of here Let's do that, because I have not had this hanging in a long time. Much better. Okay, now I can, like, actually show you. I have this in a pot inside of a pot. Explain that. Okay, but yeah, beautiful plant. Like I was saying, I love having Maranta Lemon Lime, or the one with, like, the red stripe, which I used to have that, and I must have killed it. I'm not really sure, but I love these as hanging plants. As you can see, it's already starting to kind of, like, droop down. Oh, I've got my own hair stuck in here. Okay, it's starting to droop down already because as these arms like grow and grow and get heavier, they'll fall and it's just beautiful. Like, oh my goodness. I do notice though, if you have them like as a more draping hanging plant, um, it's a little bit more difficult to notice those leaves going up and down. Hello? Yeah, it's a little bit more difficult to notice the leaves going up and down on those like lower hanging leaves. It's more obvious like on the top of the pot, but still, it's a beautiful, beautiful look to have these hanging down. So I highly recommend these as a hanging plant and just obviously a plant in general because look at that. Is that not just gorgeous? Like this plant and the Orbifolia, I feel like are just like classy plants. Does that sound weird? You know what I mean? All right, you guys, I think that's going to do it for this video, walking you through all 13, 13? Yeah, 13-ish of my prayer plants in my collection. I had so much fun going through all of these for you. I didn't even realize that I had so many until I started, like, gathering them all together. There's quite a few. Um, I really, really love this whole genre. I'm going to stick with it. I like this whole genre of plants here, the prayer plant family. They're just beautiful. They're fun to watch. They're pretty easy to care for once you kind of figure it out. And honestly, pretty easy to figure out the care as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to go through a care video with you guys soon to really kind of dive deep into what I have had success with myself. And let me know what your guys' favorite plant in this video was, what your least favorite plant was. You're not going to hurt my feelings. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, please subscribe for more and I will see you guys in the next one.